I want to end up going to Vincent. Uh, so China's been the big driver of global growth. It's become the largest lender to developing countries. It's a big market for them. Um, it's invested through the Belt and Road Initiatives. But now, as Jeff pointed out, you know, Chinese economic growth slowing down dramatically. Maybe for the next few years, we're going to actually have to get used to a China that is not growing at 8 or 10 percent a year on average, but about half that. Uh, there's a lot of internal imbalances, housing market, financial sector need to be sorted out. There's some pulling back on the Belt and Road. From your perspective, I know, Vincent, you've been doing uh, from the OECD country studies and you've looked at China. What's your take on what that means for the process of the relationship with the developing countries and the engagement of China in global processes, including on climate change? Uh, thank you, Masood, and uh, thank you to Mr. Montreal and uh, Song Min Kim. Uh, I um, am very reassured by Professor Frieden's statement that the uh, OECD will not be replaced by China anytime soon. <laughs> As uh, the OECD uh, person here, uh, that's, uh, that's nice to hear, <laughs> and I agree. Uh, my last trip to China um, shortly before uh, the uh, COVID uh, raised its, its ugly head in, in Wuhan was in, in late 2019, when China was celebrating four decades of uh, convergence towards uh, uh, advanced uh, economies. Uh, to give you one number, uh, GDP per capita uh, in China uh, was 3% of the G7 average in the late 70s, and it rose to 36% of the OECD average by the late 2010s. This is a, an amazing takeoff that only Korea <laughs> and uh, a couple of other countries uh, managed to, to achieve uh, earlier on. Um, in the process, poverty was reduced dramatically. Uh, living standards increased a lot. And uh, in 2019, we were celebrating the, the China dream, uh, with China uh, having overtaken the US a few years earlier in terms of absolute size, in PPP terms. Uh, and uh, we were talking about how China would project uh, its might across the, the globe through the Belt and Road Initiative, which was mentioned uh, several times. Uh, and uh, then the pandemic stepped in, uh, which uh, initially uh, w was uh, managed uh, quite effectively, in a sense, by, by China. But, but then, uh, uh, as we have seen in, in recent days, uh, uh, three years of confinement, of, of repeated lockdowns, uh, and of, of low growth uh, have taken their toll. And, and uh, Chinese leaders are... Um, obsessed by two things. One is uh, growth and the other is uh, social stability. And uh, both were at risk uh, uh, with the, the way uh, China tried to manage uh, this pandemic. Uh, uh, it's sort of an impossible trinity that they were after uh, to have at the same time uh, maintained uh, social stability, growth and low casualties. This was not sustainable over time, especially with uh, fairly ineffective uh, Sinovac and Sinopharm vaccines. Uh, there's a recent article in The Lancet just uh, 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 a few weeks ago that documents uh, that uh, the effectiveness of the Chinese uh, vaccines is much less than that of the RMNA vaccines developed in the West. And China's unwillingness to use the more effective vaccines is, is quite symptomatic, uh, in, in my view. So uh, what we have seen th this week is basically uh, a very abrupt uh, turnaround in the management of the pandemic. The, the, the authorities have uh, uh, announced 10 measures to uh, relax uh, uh, COVID discipline uh, uh, and have decided to uh, shift uh, the resources from uh, massive testing and uh, massive quarantining and, and ghastly facilities towards uh, vaccination, particularly of, of the elderly. Uh, and uh, towards uh, support to, to those who are henceforth allowed to confine at home. Uh, so this, this is uh, heartening. Uh, it will uh, be tested, though, because we have reports uh, yesterday in Beijing that the uh, uh, treatments are in short supply to uh, cope with, with the surge in cases that, that are now appearing, uh, even though uh, uh, the, the number of cases is widely understated because they've stopped testing so, or, or they, they, they test much less. So 
there, there will be a, a difficult uh, transition towards living with COVID uh, in, in China. Um, Now, going back to, to the convergence process I, I started with, uh, I think something has, has changed in recent years. It was alluded to uh, by my neighbor, uh, uh, Jean-Marie Pogam, uh, talking about deglobalization and fragmentation or, or the absence thereof. But in, in the numbers, indeed, if we look at the, the share of uh, foreign trade divided by GDP in China, uh, this share has declined very substantially over the past 15 years or so. And uh, this reflects uh, several things. One is simply that China is becoming a much bigger economy, so it's normal that it would uh, <laughs> uh, be uh, less, less open on, on this measure. Uh, but also there are other uh, factors. One is the, China, the Made in China 2025 strategy that was alluded to by Jean-Marie as well. It dates back to the mid-2010s, uh, whereby uh, China seeks to uh, reduce its dependence on foreign technology. Then there's the Trump uh, war uh, uh, in 2018 and onwards with the tit-for-tat uh, uh, tariffs. Uh, then there's the U.S. Chips uh, and Science Act, the EU Chips Act, um, and the U.S. Inflation Reduction Act as well. That all go in the same direction of uh, uh, bringing security concerns into uh, uh, economics and, and uh, 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 cl cl trying to friendshore or to homeshore uh, activities. So. Uh, a more inward-looking perspective on, on globalization. At the same time, there's less FDI uh, in China, and the foreign firms operating in China are either exiting for some of them or decoupling their activities in China from those uh, elsewhere. Now, the, the, the Belt and Road Initiative was mentioned, or the new Silk Roads, uh, and this is also a good illustration of how China's clout uh, has, has been uh, at the same time very impressive and has uh, shown uh, limits. A number of uh, countries, uh, recipient countries, are now stuck with infrastructure that is uh, only half functional uh, uh, and with debt, uh, uh, significant debt, opaque debt uh, to Chinese uh, lenders. So th there, there is a, a problem there. And then uh, on climate change, uh, to, to wrap up, uh, uh, perhaps the, the, the most important issue, uh, China is by, by far the largest emitter of greenhouse gases uh, in the world, twice as much as the U.S. Of course, in per capita terms, it's still half as much as the U.S., but the U.S. is not very virtuous, so it, 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 it's, it's really bad. And China uh, has long recognized uh, this challenge, if only because you cannot breathe in Beijing. Uh, the, the smog is so, 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 so bad. So they're well aware, and in their successive five-year plans, they have set out uh, ambitions to uh, reduce uh, emissions. Uh, and in some ways, they've played a very important role, I think, of uh, solar panels, for example, is because China has stepped up uh, the production uh, of those that we have seen a dramatic decline in the price of renewables, which will definitely uh, uh, be part of the solution uh, for, for climate change. But uh, in parallel, China continues to be uh, over-reliant on coal on a massive scale. Uh, they have promised to stop building uh, uh, coal-fired plants abroad, but uh, since that promise in 2021, uh, 14 more such plants have uh, started operations. And at home, they continue to build at a frantic pace. Uh, so uh, there is a clearly a, a problem here uh, with, with how China is going to achieve its uh, uh, commitment to uh, have peak carbon by 2030 and to have uh, carbon neutrality by 2060. And how, more importantly, the world at large uh, Will, will reach its climate goals. So uh, for China, a part of the solution is to move away from a model that's highly dependent on uh, real estate. Uh, real estate uh, uh, is uh, in, uh, very intensive in cement, uh, in steel. Uh, it's uh, not compatible with a low carbon uh, model. Uh, and financially, it's also proven to be uh, uh, unsustainable. Uh, and uh, China has this long-standing goal of uh, giving more weight to consumption. Uh, this, th this would help moving further towards services and away from, from heavy industry. Great, thank you very much.